and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where here in the UK the absolutely filthy weather continues. It has been raining all day and it is bucketing down outside. So um, I recorded a video in a storm yesterday and um, today seems to be no different. Um, but what are we doing puzzle-wise today? Hopefully something to make us ignore the weather. It's called Sashigani Sudoku and it's by Ambrose. And this has an enormous rating on Logic Masters Germany, 100% at the time of recording. And um, it's a, clearly a hybrid of the Japanese logic problem Sashigani. And I think it's, well, it must be, it's certainly got a Japanese name. I presume it heralds from Japan. I'll probably now find out, find out this is another of Eric Fox's creations. Um, but anyway, it's a hybrid of Sashigani and just normal Sudoku. And I think I have done maybe one Sashigani puzzle before, which was on the Discord server. Because the Discord server, for those of you who don't know, um, well, it publishes two things daily. Firstly, a genuinely approachable Sudoku. Um, you'll you probably have heard of that and certainly you might have watched Mark doing Mark does a solve of those puzzles every three days in his video um, and in fact we have an app full of those wonderful puzzles as well but there is also a daily pencil puzzle a genuinely approachable pencil puzzle and I think I did a Sashigani for one of those so uh, I can't claim to be completely inexperienced but I certainly feel novice when it comes to this this puzzle type um, but it's got, yeah, it's got a really, really interesting rule set. And the comments on Logic Masters Germany basically say this is a work of some, well, it's a masterpiece. So that sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, and I don't have any news for you today. So it's another newsless day. Um, just an appeal as ever. If you enjoy the channel, please do think about at least liking the video, possibly even subscribing. We would be most grateful. And if you really, really like the video, then we have loads of extra stuff available on our Patreon page. And I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen there. Um, but let's get on with the rules. The rules of Ambrose's puzzle are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Divide the grid into one cell wide L-shaped regions. Oh, I've remembered. I, I just snipped an example from Logic Masters Germany. So let's put up the example while we read the rules in the hope that it sheds light on what's going on. So divide the grid into one cell wide L shaped region. So I can see that this solution is full of sort of, I was about to say Tetris pieces, but actually it's not full of Tetris pieces. It's, it's, it is full of L shaped regions, but they aren't all tetrominoes. There, there are some triominoes there and even, um, whatever that is, a hexomino in the bottom left hand corner, but they are all L shaped. Digits may not repeat in a region. So these then operate a bit like killer Sudoku cages. You can see that within each each L-shaped region, there is not a repeated digit. Um, a circle in a cell means that means that cell is the bend in a region, and also the number in that cell is how many cells are in that region. This rule does not apply to regions without a circle. Okay, so for regions that have a circle in them. Yes, okay, I can see that the the circle is always at the bend. It's always at the joint of the dog leg. And it always seems to contain the number of cells in the, in the polyomino. So that makes sense. Well, that's why we've got a six in this lower left-hand corner and two fours in the other circles. So that makes sense. So far, so good. Um, oops, I've got to scroll the rules down. So let, don't worry, I'm going to return to this. An arrow in a cell means that cell is an end of a region. Okay, so I can see how in the in the finished grid all of the all of the arrows are indeed at the end of the dog leg. One they don't have to be at the end of the long they don't have to be at the end of the long end. Here this two is at the end of the short end, this sort of toe of Italy here. Um, but they are always at an end of a of a uh, of an L-shaped region. Okay, and what does the, what does that mean? The arrow, oh, the arrow points to the bend. And also the value in the cell counts the number of cells in that leg of the region, including the bend cell. And this rule does not apply to regions without an arrow. Right, so, again, I can see that. If you look at this cell in the bottom right-hand corner, that has an arrow. 
it's point that arrow is pointing at the bend and the digit in that arrow cell is a three and that's saying that the the distance if you like or the number of cells in this string is three up to the up to and including the bend so here it's two let's try and find another one that one is three and that one's got two arrows in it so that's three going down to the bend and two going horizontal to the bend that all makes sense a corner clue okay so that's going to be one of these corner clues like this a corner clue gives the sum of the cells in that in that cells region the sum, okay so that's just a killer sudoku so that's telling us that all of the cells in that region which all have to be different from earlier on in the rules um it tells us the sum so let's try and prove that to ourselves yeah so this 10 region here is full of 2 3 and 5 2 plus 3 plus 5 equals 10 corner clues do not need to be in the top left cell of a region okay that rule is there because in normal killer sudoku puzzles you will always find that the little clue that this 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 little clue is always in the uppermost leftmost um cell of the cage now here we're being told that rule does not apply a region may be lacking any or all clue types okay so we can have yeah and we can see that from this top left region that's got no circles it's got no arrows it's got no little number in it okay i think i understand that that's remarkably surprising <laughs> do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now i get to play let's get cracking and let's try and do sashigani sudoku now how shall we start this we shall start with so the circles tell us the total size of their regions and this right okay and the circle is at a bend isn't it so this cell is interesting because if that's at a bend it clearly the region that goes through or that includes this circle is not a straight line so this must bend outwards this reminds me if you've ever done um a mesu puzzle or mashu puzzle uh, you'll know that a black dot on the perimeter always has to extend to the in, into the grid and that's a bit like this although we don't know that this extends two but it must extend at least one so how should we do this we'll do this with the should we do this with the pen tool yeah okay so we'll, we'll we'll maybe we won't do it with black though because black's a bit of a black suggesting we know everything that's going on which i don't feel we do let's do it with a slightly more neutral color maybe we'll do it with what's blue look like oh blue looks lovely yes okay so there has to, this has to extend in like that now ah okay so now this one's interesting because this one now can't extend down because then you can see if it did that this this couldn't be an l-shaped region because this needs to have another extension that's either in one of these two directions so that sort of divides this cell this cell where i'm making these nice patterns from this cell we can't join those together the other way of seeing that is to note this one has to extend in one of these directions how could it then do that it would be making a u or a funny shape like this that's not going to be working so that's got to extend up because we can't have a straight line through this has got to be the bend um now what does that mean i was going to say is it possible now to limit the size of these circles but i don't think it is really i mean that could be one two three four five six seven i mean i'm not pencil marking seven different numbers into this pencil mark would be all over that like a rash but not not me <laughs> one two three four and don't worry don't worry it's only a joke some of you very well not many of you most of you know that mark and i are very good friends in real life and we feel it's completely appropriate to take the mick out of each other occasionally um and we take no offense there's literally almost nothing we could say to each other at which we would take offense um now let's yeah that one's similar look it, ca it can't go further than that because if it encompasses that that's the end of its region so one two three four five six seven again that's a, a load of pencil marking 
Right, well I'm not seeing anything. I must be the arrows then. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some lineage with arrows then, because arrows are always pointing at the bend. So you can never extend you know, this arrow is at the end of its region, so it's always going up. And in fact we can in, we can sort of hypothecate this cell off. Can't, this cell cannot join with anything that's orthogonally adjacent to the arrow cell and not in the arrow's direction because that would be against the arrow's rule. So we can do that there, we can do that here, we can do that here. I don't really know if this is actually getting me very far but I'm going to carry on doing it in the absence of or because I haven't got any better ideas. Um, this has got to do that. There we go, we've used all the arrow clues now. Have we actually learned anything? That Oh, hang on, this is a circle clue again on a boundary. How did I not see that before? So that's got to do that. And this time, ah, oh, this is good. This is better. This can't turn up because of the shape of the arrow. So it's got to turn down. Okay, now... So now I'm wondering about this cell, actually. Because that cell is clearly not part of this this region we're just we've just connected to this 13 clue so that one's got to come out that way so we can sort of do that now what is the digit in this then and the reason that might be a better question is this is part of a 13 region so it can't it can't have five cells in it it's got to either have three cells or four cells three or four because it already has three it could grow one more but if it grew two more the triangular number for 5 is 15, and 15 is bigger than 13, so that won't work. Um, ah, so now this region here is not in the same region as this one, because of this, because of the north boundary in this cell. In fact, blue might have been a bad colour, I'm realising. But in this cell, you can see it on, there's a north northerly boundary. So if this region and this region were connected, we need to have something extending up here or up here. And we can't have either of those things. It couldn't be extending up there, actually, because of the arrow pointing in this direction. Right, so something... So we're either doing that or we're doing that, I think. And similarly from this side, although that could probably go up again. This is a weird puzzle, isn't it? It's quite interesting. Say, right, the same thing is happening up here. Ah, those, right, and these have both got arrows. Right, so what, what numbers can we include in these? Th these cannot join together, because that would imply that we have to do this. From one from one of one of these bending cells, and neither can have a bend in them because of their, their arrow cells. So each one of these individually can go one cell more. So this must be a two-three pair. Ah, right. Okay. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to all of the arrow cells and I'm going to fill them in with their options. Well, so one, one, two, three, four, five. That's got to be two, three, four, or five. That one's probably the same. One, two, three, four five although actually i'm going to take five out of that one because if this did join up like this that would be a six cell region summing to 17 and that's impossible because the triangle number for six is 21 so this can come to here only which means it's one two three it's a four a maximum so it's two three or four that one's mischievous isn't it that could go an awful long way um that one hasn't got an arrow in it. That one's a two or a three because it, it can't come and clash into this one. So that's quite small. Oh dear. That's not going to be good enough, is it? What's that one? One, two, three. No, one, two. It's either two. It can't be one, obviously. Two, three or four. So that's two, three or four. So that's quite interesting now. Look, we've got a 2, 3, 4 triple in column 5. And that would be absolutely wonderful. 
if we had another cell that was limited in this column, but I don't think that we do. Oh, you rotten thing. Okay. So maybe we've got to do more Sashigani then. Where does that cell go? Well, that, that's actually interesting. I'm going to ask that question. Where does this, this cell here go? Now, it's got to go north. It can't connect down here because that's definitely not an L-shaped region anymore. So it goes up, which pushes that up. So this is in the 17 region. This is in the 19 region. Um, I could be about to get interrupted. I hear children on the move, but we shall see. Um, one, two. So that could, oh, I see, that could bend or it could continue. But if it continues, it's sort of penning this one in on the left, isn't it? It would have to continue again because it hasn't achieved an L shape yet. It's still, yeah, and it can't do that because then this one on its left hasn't got, this one hasn't got an L shape. So it would have to, in fact, it's broken. You can't do it at all. Ha, this one on its left never becomes an L if this if this goes as far up as row four because it's it's got to go up again and this one can never turn. That's really interesting. So this has to turn here, which means that's a, a legitimate boundary. That's a legitimate boundary. That's a legitimate boundary. And this is right. And we've got the same exact problem with this cell in the sense that if this doesn't turn in here and it and it goes up, then this has got to get out and turn and it's going to pen this this one in the left. That's beautiful. So it's just forced. It's got to be that. Bingo. Right. And now now here's another little thing. That cell is a three because it's it only sees three cells up to its edge. So that means those three cells sum to 16 by a process of mathematics. That's a two by a pro. Oh, that's cool. That's a three. And now look, these ones, we now know how they move because we can draw the line segment in. So that one comes to here. This one can't turn up because then this cell in the top left hand corner has no friends. So that's not going to work. So this has got to come out here. This is gorgeous. It can't turn down into its friends because that's most certainly not an L shape now. So that's got to go along all the way to there, which means that turns down. Oh, this is just great. It's mag it's really strange, but lovely. Ooh, hang on. How does that get out? Oh, see, so that's got to do, whoopsie, that's got to do that. That's the only way of creating an L shape from that position. So all of a sudden, look, I'll take out these blues now. That this, oh, I was going to say that's got to turn, but maybe it can go into its friend. Ooh, if it went into its friend, it couldn't be a three in this cell. In fact, it wouldn't. Well, hang on. If it went into it, if these are the same region, that would be a four. If this turns, it would be a two. Well, I don't know how to do that, but I have noticed that's a four. So I'm putting that in, in the, in the, in the love of low hanging fruit. So that means, that means we can complete this region. It's got to go to there. So it's four cells large, which means this comes out, which means that must turn up and then stop because that's all it can do. This must turn up. This, this is great that that can't turn up. It's not creating an L-shaped region. So this must now stop. This has got to keep going. Oh, I was going to say, I was going to say that this must turn up, but actually look, it can join up here. But we've actually, we've got quite a long way all of a sudden from absolutely nowhere. There's probably some maths we can start to think about in a moment as well. I'm just thinking things like those two cells have to sum to 13. These have to sum to 16. Um, what's going on in the 13 cage? We need the right. Those three cells sum to nine and they, they can't be two, three, four, and they can't be one, three, five. So they've got to be one, two and six. 
that's not able to be two. So now we've got a two in one of those cells looking at this, which could never have been a two. Circles can never be as low as two because you can't make dog legs in two cells. Um, what about, oh, let me just fill in that line there because that looks, in fact, look, I don't like the fact I've got unperimetered cells that are blueless. They're a bit sad, aren't they? Um, right, now what do we do? Anyone got any good ideas? Oh, I know, I've got a good idea. That's a two because it sees two cells until it's until it's bend. There you go. That's a good idea. So now two is in one of those two cells in box two by a process of a thing called Sudoku. Now it is outrageous to make me do Sudoku at a mere 21 minutes into the puzzle, but that is what we've been required to do. Um, okay, so the right, these add up to 13, but not involving a four. So this is either five, eight or six, seven. Can we somehow use the fact there's a six in one of these? If this was six, seven, there'd be a six up here. I don't know. Um, this digit. Right, that digit is not a four because it's got four in its box already. It's a bit hard to see the box boundaries, but there is, that is a Sudoku box. So this can't be a four so it's at least a five which means that line's got to go again now it can't be a six so this is either a five or a seven i think and if it's a seven we're going all the way to here and then we have to bend that looks very difficult that's impossible isn't it i don't see how we fill this seven cell region um, having to bend in this square if this goes all the way to the end. I mean, it's just, it's just you can see it's, oh, it's not, no. I'm, well, it is impossible, actually. I've just seen why it's impossible. It's quite tricky, though. So if this comes to all the way to the end, the question is whether it goes up or down. Now, if it goes down, this this region it's part of is a 20 has to have two cells something to 22 but there are eight cells in it and the triangular number for eight is 36 so it definitely cannot be a 22 region so in other words that has to bend up so we're in this situation now this cell we've got to go out like this now do we join it to this or not if we join it to this we have to have a bend and now this cell's isolated if we don't join it to this We've got a little two by two here that's got to be filled with two dog legs and that won't work. So it's complicated, but fairly easy to see that this. Well, this is important, isn't it? Because this can't be a four, it has to go again. And now it can't turn down without isolating this cell. So it turns up. This square is a five. That's not a five anymore. Oh, which we'd already eliminated. How annoying. Oh, I see. Right, so this square here one, two, is not a three either because that can't be the bend. So that is a two or a four. Uh, this has to bend up. So this cell has to, we have to do this. And now, wow, but now it's trickier. It's trickier now. We could turn down or... But if we turn down, we have to do that. No, we can't. That's lovely. Right. If this turns down, this has to, we have to put that line extension from this circle because it can't go left, but it must have one branch in its horizontal plane. It cannot just be made up of vertical stuff. There's no turn in it. So we have to put that in. But now how can we how can we get this cell into a dog leg? We can't. So that doesn't turn down. It goes there. And now we can't turn down because we'll isolate this. So we have to go up. Now this is isolated. So that's got to join and turn. 
and all of a sudden we've got loads of interesting stuff going on in the bottom right of the grid. That's forced. Um, oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Look, so this four is now looking at this. So this four's done massive work. Firstly, it eliminated a four from there. Now it's eliminating a four from here. So this has got to continue to grow. And that's presumably going to be potent. So all of this is forced now. That's weird though. So that, oh, well, okay. That's, that's, that's penned off, which is good. And that means that is a five, which means, oh, it's not almost good for this, this domino here, which we know adds to 13. I've almost managed to get five out of it. I suppose there could still be a five in it though. So, right, this 22, 22 could be six cells. So I don't think I can, I can conclude that it can't come to here. I mean, obviously it can't come to there. This is 28 in five cells. So these four cells sum to 23, that's probably fine. What about this cell now? That's isolated. So that's got to come up into the cell it turns in, which means we can do that line segment. And what, okay, and what number are we putting in that circle? Because that doesn't look like it can have a very big number in it. It could go, we could turn left and it would be a four, but that would clash with the four that's already in box five. And it can't join up with this because that would imply there were two bends in this dog leg. So it has to be a three, I think. But that doesn't tell us which way it goes, bizarrely. It means there's a three in one of those three cells. No, actually not the top one by Sudoku. There's a three in this region. Right, and this region is a 25 region. So that means the other three cells in this add up to 22. So they must have a nine in them now. So it's either going to be, it's either going to be nine, six, seven, three, or nine, five, eight, three. I feel like if it was nine, six, seven, three, that would be a 3-6 pair. There would be a 9-7 pair here. And that would be an 8. And that's part of a... Well, that would make... That would limit the size of this 17 cage. It couldn't then join up to this. But the other alternative is that this... What's the other alternative? The other alternative is that this is five, eight, nine, and that will put five in here with the three. So I think the nine is always over here. Yeah, yes, I suppose that's true, isn't it? Because either the five or the six must be in the 25 cage and cannot be in those two cells. So this is this doesn't have nine in it and it's made up of either five, three, or six, three. Therefore, there is a nine in here, along with either an eight or a seven. So this is a seven, eight, or a nine. No, that's not a nine, because we just said there's a nine here. So this is seven or eight. Bobbins, that's really, really, not helped us very much. It's given us a whole load of pencil marks that have just confused the confused the tableau on which we're working. Right, so what on earth am I meant to look at now? Is it Sudoku? <laughs> it could well be. Or is it I don't know. I don't oh hang on that domino adds up to 13. That's incredibly unhelpful. 
Have I used up all my arrow clues? It's, it would be very like me to have not used them all up. Oh, that's not right. That's not five. I don't think that really helps us, does it? Three or six here. Got an enormous region. Oh, actually, you can't have that in it. Right, hang on. There's a thought I haven't had. You can't have an. You can't have too enormous a region because you can only have nine cells in a region because there are only nine different Sudoku digits. Right, so this never visits that cell because it has to still achieve a turn and it would have 10 cells in it. Oh, right, no, actually, hang on, this, this has to turn now. Oh, that's so gorgeous. I wish I'd seen that earlier. That's lovely. Right, so the point here is how, how big does this get? Now, if it doesn't turn where it is at the moment, it has to extend. Now, it can't extend and turn down there because this circle is telling us that that should be at the dog, at the bend of the dog leg, and it wouldn't be. So it doesn't do that. Its only other alternative would be to do that and be a nine cell region. But that breaks the rules of Sudoku. Because remember, you can't repeat a digit along this line. So this digit needs to appear somewhere in row one. Where's it going to appear if it can't appear in those eight cells? And the answer is there. And that's in the same box as itself. And that doesn't work. So in fact, this turns there. Seven. So it's either a seven cell region or an eight cell region. Oh, that's really OK. So I sort of feel like that must do something profound, but okay, let's let's well let's think about this circle then. This circle because it needs a movement in the horizontal plane, so it's got to take that one now. And it can't join up to this one, otherwise there would be two bends on the dog leg. So it's either going up or down. Now do I know which? This one, right, this one must do that because it can't extend anymore. Oh, this is all getting very cluttered in this top right. Can we force this somehow? Is there something clever we can say about this arrangement? The answer is probably, but I don't see how to do it immediately. Um, let me think. Sorry. Uh, hmm. Hmm. How do we do this? Is there a way of knowing what's going on in the top? Do I have to think about the corners for some reason? Well, I can actually say something about this cell. And that's that it's not in this region. Because if it was, it would have to look like that, and this cell would have no fill. So this, well, that must be a, yeah, that must be a bend. It must be a bend, because if it's an end, how are we joining this to something that, you know, we could do that. That would be legitimate, but not in a way that yields this cell any joy. Yeah, in fact, that's the simpler way to think about this. What, what is this cell? Now, the answer is it can't be part of that region because the bend's in the wrong place. So it's, it's not part of that region. So it's got to be part of a new region. So we've got to do that as a, a marking. Now, how do we get a bend into this one's region now? Well, the only bend that we can provide it with is the top right hand corner. So that's forced now, which which pins this in. Now. Oh, I see. Right. This is beautiful. This is beautiful because what number am I going to put in there now? The answer is not two or three. So it's at least a four. 
which means it can't turn up. That's beautiful. That is lovely. Wow. So it's got to turn down. It's got to go at least four. That's penning this in. So this has got to turn now, which is on an arrow. So that becomes a two. That becomes a four. So this has got to go all the way there. Oh, this is just quality. This is a beautiful puzzle. Good grief. Oh, look, 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 look. That can't be eight now because you can't fill it if you make this eight. These four cells would have to add up to nine. That's impossible. The triangle number four is 10. So that's seven. This is a one, two, three, triple. Oh, I was about to say these can't be three because of this three. That's very much misunderstanding how Sudoku works. Um, well, that in fact, that's a one because it can't be a two or a three. That That is in the same box. Um, so this is a two, three. So that's become a four, which means that that goes all the way up there, which finishes that region. Look. Now. That... Right, I see. And now this being a 7 means this is an 8, 9, which means that that must have a 5 in it, this region, because we know it's got three digits that add to 22 along with the 3, and the 5 has to go here, which means this is now a 6, 7 pair. This is now a 3. Um, there's a 3 down here in this 22 region, but we don't know how big that region is yet. We've got to do, right, this region is finished. It can't, it can't join up there without making something that's most certainly not L-shaped. So that's not gonna be right. That's got to be that, which means that's finished as well in the top left. It is a seven cell region. This region looks a bit skew if doesn't it? And well, clearly we've got to be doing something like this for this region, but it could still come to that cell, I think. But that cell now has to join up with this one. So we're, and that's a size three region, so that's forced. Okay, so it actually is all forced. It just gets completely forced in this, this region of the grid. It's remarkable, actually. Okay, and we're just left, right, this cell now needs to find a home somewhere. So it's got to join here. We don't know, ooh, this one's been penned in, so that's got to do that. So that's a forced region, which means this has no home unless it joins up and makes a sort of V pentomino in the top of the grid. Okay, this one needs to achieve a turn this one here, so it's got to do that, which means this 22 doesn't come up too high. Oh, I see. Oh, the, ooh. yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'm suddenly worried. I've got three and four looking at this circle. It's already of size three. It can't be of size four, and it can't be bigger than size five, so that must be a five. It must extend here and extend here, and that is going to potentially pinch everything into position, I think. Let's pinch that one pinch that one. I'm not entirely sure that I haven't finished the Sashigani part of the puzzle now. I'm just staring at it. I'm almost tempted to recolor it now, you know, and sort of use the four color theorem to try and keep track of the regions without having the blue boundaries obscuring the Sudoku parts. Is that a bit of an overkill if I do that? I don't know. Well, let's let's start at least by filling in some numbers. That's a three, because where's the three on my keyboard? There, because it's part of a region of size three. That's a four. It's part of a region of size four. Have we got any arrows we've not filled in? No, at least I can't see any, which is a bit disconcerting because it's slightly surprising. This is going to finish from here. We don't seem to have got an incredibly large amount of information in the puzzle to play with. Hmm. Can we say anything about this? Those three add up to 16, but they don't have two, three or four in them by Sudoku. So if they didn't have a one in them, 
there'd be a minimum of five, six, and seven, which combining with a three is too many to make 19. Right, so there is a one in that domino because there's a one here locking it out of this one, which means we have a one in one of those two positions. That's really unhelpful. <laughs> um, there is, good grief, what on earth am I meant to look at here? Four, there's a four in one of the, right, Sudoku, of course. Why did I ever doubt it? There's a four in one of those two positions by Sudoku. This four means it's there. So I get a four and I get the one unwound. There's now a four in one of these two positions. I wonder whether it can go in the 22. If it went in the 22, we'd have seven of the 22. So we'd need 15 more. So that would be an eight or a nine. Hmm. Six, look, we've got a little six arrangement, forcing a six into one. We can't put six into those, so six in box nine is in the top row. Does that help us at all? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Now, now looking at this row, noting that it needs to have five, six, seven, eight, and nine in it. So the five is in either that cell or that cell. Can we put a, if we put a five in here, then we've got nine. Oh no, that doesn't work. Right, that's important. Okay, so the question is, where does the five go in this row? And I don't think it can go here because at the moment we've got, in fact, yeah, okay, that I should have focused on this. I, I focused so hard on locking a one in here and I stopped thinking about it. The other two cells in this cage add up to 15. I'm sure, okay, I can't do anything with it, but I can say there's no five in it. So the only place five can go in that row is here, which means there's a five in one of those two cells by Sudoku. This is a six, seven, eight, or nine. And so are these cells. That's proper pencil marking. Mark would be proud of me. Um, hmm, okay. Don't know how to do that though. Can we somehow improve on that? I suppose that means two is in one of these cells, which we already knew if I'd, if I'd focused on twos. I'm just gonna double click my threes and see if I can do anything with those. Nothing amazing, I don't think. Although, again, I could be could be missing a trick or two here, I fear. I'm probably forgetting a rule or two as well, <laughs> which is even more disconcerting. Um, okay, this five is saying, right, that's the Sashigami. Forget about that. You've done that. So these squares are one and a six, seven, eight, and nine. So I may, maybe I'll have to go to extensive pencil marking level two. Um, don't see how I'm gonna solve this. It's too, it's too sparse. There's not enough information. Uh, we can't maths, can we? I just wonder about maths in the bottom two rows all of a sudden, those cells are all, I don't know what they are, but I know they're total. So if you think about the secret in the context of the bottom two rows, the secret of course of Sudoku, which is something I only tell my very favorite people, is that a complete row of a Sudoku contains the digits one to nine once each. Therefore it sums to 45. Now, that means these two rows together sum to 90. So, but we know, what have we got here? We've got 40 in those, 62, and another 13 is 75. And a five here is 80. So these two cells sum to 10. And they're not three, seven, and they're not four, six. So they're either a one, nine pair, which would have to be in this order, or a two, eight pair, which would have to be in that order. 
and somewhat annoyingly, <laughs> I think both of those things are possible. But okay, but only one of eight and nine is used in this domino. So in this row, the other has to be in that cell. I'm not sure that matters, but I, it's probably worth recording anyway. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, four is in one of those two cells in box one. Can I do anything with that? Of course not. If that was a four, that would be a nine. That would be hugely, well, it wouldn't be hugely powerful. It would be a little bit interesting. Okay, so what else could I highlight here in terms of... Can we do anything with twos and threes? Um, these squares, maybe? They've got to be one, four, eight, and nine. Let's pencil mark them, see what we can get rid of. One can come out of there, four can come out of there. And I have noticed that that, that is a region, isn't it? So whatever that digit is, is not appearing in any of those four cells which sort of feels like it might be important somehow. Wow. This is where maybe I should switch glasses. Switch to my... Yeah, I'm going to switch glasses. Maybe this will have a Clark Kent-like effect on my Sud Sudoku solving. Right, these are, my, these are my glasses for close work. Whoa. There's always a moment or two, though, where it's all a bit strange. Five is in one of those two cells in row four, I've just noticed, by Sudoku, using this five and this five to help me. Unfortunately, this is a, a an uncaged cell. So maybe I should highlight the ones that I've got totals for, just to try and keep track of those. So that's a 28 cage. That is... Well, that's a 19 cage, but these are adding up to 16. But let's let's record those as a as a set. I've sort of used the 15. I've sort of used the 13. Oh no, I haven't used the 13 well enough though. The two is horizontal, so that's not two eight. That's it. That's one nine. Look, there we go. So that wasn't. That's not nine now because it's got. It would repeat in the cage. These are not one, so that puts one in the corner. There's a six here, so this is seven, this is six. Good grief. It was, it was the change of glasses. It's made all the difference. So now, what does this mean? What does this mean these two digits have got to add up to? We've got 15 here, so we need, we need 13 more, not involving five, eight, not involving four, nine. So that's not four, so that must be four. Uh, and this has got to be a 6-7 pair, which is rather cool. So let's put that in and see if we can... Whoopsie. Let's see if we can do anything with that. Yes, there's a 7 here. So this is 6. This is 7. That's not 7. That's not 7. This is not 6. This is not 6. That's not 7. Look, let's make sure we keep track of everything. And... So now this 22k, oh, we actually know what those digits are, don't we, just by Sudoku. They are three and seven. So we don't know the order, I don't think, but we know that's a three, seven pair. So we know this is a one, two pair, and we can do the order using this one up here. That gives us a two here by Sudoku. This is now not nine, but neither is this. So this box, that's great. So that's got to be the nine in this box. This has got to be a six, eight pair. These three cells at the top are now one, eight, and nine. But we don't have any totals up here, so we're relying a bit on... That's not a one, because of this one being in its region. 
Okay, one, one, one's in one of those cells as well. So that's a one, five pair. So that's not a one. Yes, I see. I can get rid of ones from these squares. This becomes four, eight, nine. This square in the middle of the grid is an eight or a nine just by Sudoku because we've got this one, five pair at the top. That's, I'm trying to keep track of these regions now. Yeah, no, no, I thought I was going to, I thought that six, eight was in the same region as that. Of course it's not. Um, all right, what about this column then? Three, five and seven. Three, five and seven. That is interesting. I'll tell you why. The five in this column is in one of those two cells and the five in th this column is in one of those two cells. So that's an X wing on fives. And where do we put five in row two then? It's not in any of those cells. It's not here. That is a five, which makes this a five by Sudoku. Fives are suddenly almost done. Oh, I was about to say this. Oh, hang on. If that's a five, we know the mathematics of this. That's got to be an eight to make that. Well, thank goodness that's never happened before. My computer just crashed. Um, I just put this eight in and I was terrified that the solve to that point was going to be lost forever. But I've just checked and the recording is OK. Um, so that is a bonus. Um, but um, it's taken me a few minutes, I have to say, to sort that out. So um, <laughs> let's get back to it. And I really hope that doesn't happen again although it's very discombobulating that it's happened at all. So we just got this eight, and I think that gave us a four here by the looks of things, doesn't it? Because that displaced a pencil mark, um, which gives us a four pencil mark in box two, and it gives us an eight at the bottom here by Sudoku and a nine here, and this is now not an eight or a nine, so that is a one or a six. Um, and we can therefore, that square looks restricted to me. It can't, it needs to be one, two, three, or it needs to be six by Sudoku. It's actually a naked single because of the row. We've got one, two, three in there. So that's six, that's one. Oh, is that, although have I broken this now? I can't remember. I need, oh no, I needed these two squares to add up to 15, didn't that, along with the one. So this being six means this needs to be seven and eight, which we can do. So that's still okay. That's eight, that's six, therefore that's nine, that's eight. Oh, come on, keep going and don't crash. <laughs> that's six, that's two, that's two, that's three. That's that cell there is a nine of all things. Uh, so this box I can see needs six, seven and eight. So that must be, whoa, 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 whoa. That's my fault, nothing to do with the computer. So this is a seven, eight pair. Um, hmm. Okay. And what else can we do here then? I'm gonna check these two cells because they've, I've basically finished this column. It's six and nine in those two cells. So these cells are one, three, and seven, and that's not a three. Actually, neither is this one, because that three is in the same region as that one. So that's a three at the top of the grid, which means that's no three. Is this, no, there's still two places for three, I think, uh, in box three. And it doesn't look like, we, oh no, we could still get a three in the corner. We could still be in for music. Let's see. Um, what should we do now? Do we know? I don't know the total of this cage, do I? I'm going to check that digit though, because it's obviously seeing a four and a nine in its region, although it's already seeing a four. So this digit cannot be one, two, three, four, five, or six or seven or nine, that is an eight. I think that's a naked single. I'm gonna double check that. It can't be one, it can't be two, three, four, five, six, seven, or nine. Yeah, that's an eight. So that's an eight, that's a seven. That's a nine now, which gives us a one eight pair here. Um, 
maybe check this row, one, six, and seven. There, yeah, the, uh, there's only one place for one in row two now, and that's there. So that's one, that's seven. Don't know if we can do the six, seven pair we seem to be left with. It's probably, although that digit, look, has to appear somewhere in, in row one. So it could go there, or it could go here. Again, I'm not sure. There's probably some sudoku type stuff we can do there. But you know me. I'm never one to major on that. Um, that's a 2 or a 9. My sudoku. That's a 2, 4 or a 9. Have we got any region sh chicanery we can perform with this? Not that I'm immediately seeing. Oh, 8 there means that's an 8. So that might do some stuff. That's, that's 1. That's 5. That's no longer 5. Uh, has that done it? I don't know. No, maybe not. Two, three, six, and seven in these squares. So that's two, three, or six. And that's two, six, or seven. Okay, what's going on? Oh, I see. Right, where is five in this box? It seems to only be able to be there. Which... I don't think it's advanced, advanced the cause terribly much. Right, yeah, but now that digit has to appear in row one. So you can see it has to go there. It can't repeat in this in its region. It's not five or eight, so it must go there, which means this is a six, seven pair, which means that's a three. So that's a three, that's a seven. That's now a two. So this is so that's a two using our pencil marking, and presumably have we done it now? That's got to be four, six, or nine. I still can't see how to do it. I'm sure it's finished if I can just spot the right thing. Um, what is it there? Oh, this the uh, no. I was about to say that six is in that region. That's just not true. Um. What other region geometry have we got? Have we got this square here? Is six, seven, or nine by the row? Whoa, okay. Am I missing some maths here? What is it? Is it maths or is it something something else? <laughs> that region is not gonna help me. That region is not gonna help me. This region, I don't think that's going to help me. Ah, that region will help me though. That six is in the same region as that one. So that's nine. That's six. That's six. That's seven. So that's nine. That's four. That's four. That's nine. That's, whoa, 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 whoa. That's seven. And that is a six. And that might be correct. Let's click tick, see if it understands. Yes. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I'm sorry about that um, hiccup near the end. That was very disconcerting indeed. I cannot tell you how worrying it is. If I mean, if that started to happen more often, it would be an absolute disaster. But what we can say is that Sashigani Sudoku by Ambrose is a rather wonderful puzzle. Um, I mean, what an incredible idea. It must be very hard to execute that very difficult if you imagine trying to create the early clues so that you get a nice path of how to do the sashigani part and then you know while also sort of intermingling the sudoku with it but it feels very mind-bending to try and construct but what i yeah but it's very very good fun to try and solve it let me know in the comments how you got on i do enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic